Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and I'm very excited for this video because Jesus Christ, we got a ban list update. I have a program set to refresh constantly on the uh, ban list page, and I got a notification literally about 30 seconds ago before I opened my uh, thing, so I've not looked at the list at all. I literally just wanted to get this video, and I uh, get this video done, and done, like basically do it quickly, of, like just basically my own personal opinion of what I see on the ban list as I go through it, because it literally just updated less than like two minutes ago at the time of me uh, filming this, so I haven't looked at anything. I unfortunately couldn't get my uh, face cam working uh, quick enough for me to like get this done, and like my webcam is basically just shot right now as far as uh, as far as being able to put it as a face cam uh, option. So unfortunately, that's not a thing for this video. But these are going to be my live reactions to the ban list because. Jesus, man, uh, I've been waiting for months for a ban list update. But anyway, the first thing that I can see is that it's effective until March 31st, so April 1st will be when the list rolls over. Uh, it is updated today. And the first thing I can see is Magic Spectre Unicorn Kieran is forbidden. It was limited. So that is something I agree with. Kieran is a huge stagnator of the format. Um, like, it, anytime Kieran is involved, like, formats just get absolutely, like, dismantled by it because of the fact that Kieran is not targetable, not destroyable by card effects, has 2,000 attack, 2,000 defense, can bounce itself, and is a pendulum monster that's recurrable via extra deck even if you do out it. Uh, so, like, it being gone is a huge thing. Um, the Tyrant Neptune being forbidden. This was something that the OCG did on their list as well, uh, which, uh, because of the whole Lyrical Lucenia combo that you could do to, uh, to summon the Tyrant Neptune off of a zoo play um, and instant fusion and make it a huge towers type monster um, that uh, that is basically not healthy for the game so Konami taking in a proactive stance against against the Tyrant Neptune uh, basically lock because it's like a 5300 attack Tyrant Neptune that can't be affected by literally any other card in the game um, so it's like it seems seems pretty fine uh, but as we can see there's no zoo cards or any new monsters on the forbidden on the uh, forbidden list uh, no new spells and Vandy's Emptiness is banned! Hell yeah! Finally! It only took, like, years. Um, and unfortunately, this is not one of the most, like, relevant formats Emptiness has had. Like, it's definitely been, like, one of those cards that's kind of flip-floppy. It's become more personal preference, if anything, if you want to play it or not, because we have better cards in the form of Dimensional Barrier and uh, Strikes and stuff like that. We just have better traps. But Emptiness being banned is definitely a good proactive step in the uh, game going forward because of the fact that Emptiness backing up boards has definitely not been something that uh, that has been uh, <laughs> good for the game. Max C is limited. Max C is limited. <laughs> oh my God! No! 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 Max C cannot be limited. This card should have been at like three. This is like our only saving grace against against stuff against the special summon like nonsense. Unless they're just really trying to get us like to, unless they're trying to push Ghost Ash. The new, uh, the new Ghost Ogre type hand trap that comes out of Maximum Crisis. But god damn it. Max C went from 3 to 2 to 1, all on consecutive lists. That's so unfortunate. I don't know if I agree with that at all. Max C is like the most balanced card as far as a hand trap is concerned. Uh, because of the fact that it's only as good as the format is broken. So it's sort of like a balancer of the format. But god damn it. I'm not happy to see that card go to one. Uh, Rescue Cat coming off the list. This is pretty obvious with its uh, new errata. I can't remember exactly what its new errata is. I think it's like it becomes a hard once per turn or something like that. Um, I definitely haven't like paid that much attention to it. But Rescue Cat being limited again. Um, it's off its forbidden status. So that's pretty cool. That's that should, that should help some innovation happening. All I know is that the errata makes it to where the FTKs are not possible with Rescue Cat as a one card FTK anymore. Uh, which was something that was preventing Rescue Cat from coming back for the longest. Uh, Brianak, obviously, is also coming back with this new errata. Its new errata is hard once per turn. It still has the exact same effect of you can discard as many cards to bounce as many cards, but you can only do that once per turn in one instance. So instead of being able to discard a card, bounce a card, and then later in the turn discard again to bounce a card, you have to do it all at one time. If you want to bounce three cards, you can't do it one at a time to play around like Valor. You have to go, like, pitch three, bounce three. Uh, so, like... Honestly, I think Brianak being at one is fine with that new errata. Um, it seems like it's it seems like it's fine. Brain Control is back, and Brain Control also had an errata. Um, I think it's its errata was you can only use it on a card that was uh, normal summonable, uh, so it means you can't like Brain Control extra deck monsters and stuff like that. Uh, so like that's that's fine. Pretty much like the Duelist Saga is bringing a ton of these cards back. Same thing with Future Fusion. Future Fusion is limited again. It had a new errata. Uh, its new errata is that it doesn't dump the cards immediately. Its new errata is you activate it, and then you dump the cards that you use to Fusion Summon 
um, during your next standby phase, and then during the second standby phase it summons the monster. So it's not an immediate foolish burial type effect anymore. It has to survive a turn, which is definitely like doable, but it's not nearly as good as it once was. But so, let's see, Imperial Order has its new errata as well, but its new errata doesn't really hinder the card from being broken at all. Uh, this is basically now the Vanity's Emptiness replacement. Imperial Order's new errata, being limited now, its new errata is that you have to pay 700 life points during each standby phase. Mandatory. That doesn't matter though. Games aren't going to last long enough for that 700 damage turn after turn after turn to be relevant because in a like ideal world, if you're at full life and flip Imperial Order, it is still going to take you 12 turns to burn down to zero. Six of your own and six of your opponents. Um, and so like, that means Imperial Order can just stay on the board for the longest time and just prevent your opponent from being able to actually play the game. Uh, so like, this is basically just being swapped out for emptiness, it seems, because like, god, um, Imperial Order has definitely been running rampant in the OCG. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely still not fair at all. It should definitely not be, uh, be where it is. But so no new cards are hit in any way. So Rat Pierre is not limited, uh, nothing like that. All that's changed so far has been the banning of Tyrant Neptune, the banning of Kirin, but then everything else has been moving off the Forbidden, list, uh, forbidden Limited list. Uh, so, ah, okay. Wisdom Eye Magician was limited. It is now moved, moved to semi-limited status, so that's kind of all right. It's one of, like, the fairer Pendulum monsters, and this pushes the new Magician Pendulum stuff that comes out later. But Zodiac Rat Pierre is now semi-limited, and this is a card that kind of screams being semi-limited to me because if you put it at one like the OCG did, you might as well just outright ban the card because the card has virtually no effect. Like, the dump effect isn't really relevant because that effect was only relevant for sending combo to grave so that you could then use that to, um... You could then use that to uh, to do your rat play and then recycle five because you would put five and grave off the rat play. But putting rat pier at two seems fine. It doesn't outright kill the deck. It just makes the engine a lot more uh, like it makes the engine a lot more like resource based rather than field advantage based because you're going to be able to still do rat pier plays into your dridents and getting a rat out of deck to make half of a rank four and not another rank four but your uh, Broad Bull can search a level 4 that you can normal summon. So if you're able to do a Terra Top or Barrage play into your Rep here, then you're still going to be capable of doing a rank 4 play. Uh, it's just not going to be uh, it's not going to be nearly as good as it was beforehand. So I think that this is literally all that really needs to be done to the Zodiac engine, honestly. Um, like, it doesn't really change, like, a lot in terms of the cards you're allowed to play, but it does change a huge dynamic of how the deck has to play. Uh, but Interrupted Kaiju Slumber is at 2, that seems fine. Um, and then Sangin is moved to no longer on the list from Forbidden. I believe we're getting its errata as well. If we're not though, then that's just still fine. Sangin is really like irrelevant in the current format. But so, this was a list that we waited like 7 months for. And it didn't really do a lot. Um, and what it all it did was basically press rewind on the format. Because it didn't do anything to ABC, DDD or any of that, and all it did was touch Zodiac Rat Pierre. I'm a little bit skeptical about this list, because now we're back to Paleozoic. If, if Zodiac falls off the map completely because of Rat Pierre not being a factor anymore, uh, Rat Pierre into multiple rank 4s not being a factor anymore, if Zodiac just falls off the face of the map, that means that we're back to DDD, Mermel, ABC, Paleozoic format, Metal and Metalfos format. And that ultimately is a really big, like, conundrum, because that would mean we were playing this format for ages at this point, and there's no real major changes that have been done to the list after that. So this is, this is definitely, uh, this is definitely odd to me. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. This list is something we've waited months and months for, and we've gotten a list, but all it did was minorly touch the zoo. I think the zoo is still a capable deck. Like I said, you're just going to have to be, like, it's going to be a lot more resource-based than it is going to be field spam-based. Um, at least it seems that way from, like, my the little bit of theory that I'm doing in my mind currently. But Kieran is gone, so that's good. Uh, the Tyrant Neptune is definitely a preemptive hit, and then we get all these cards like Brianak and stuff back. So I guess that's cool. Uh, all that stuff seems really good and, like, workable. So there's definitely some things we can do with there. I mean, now Mermel just gets stronger because now you have access to both Brianak and Coral Dragon as potential, like, options that you could play. Uh, with to trigger your Atlanteans and stuff like that, and I mean, Brianak was banned when Atlanteans came out for the TCG uh, for like that reason. But other than that, again, let me know.
know what you guys think in the comments down below. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links are in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the way to go, as well as it also gets you access to a monthly raffle giveaway for either a high dollar card or a good amount of Konami product at the end of the month, whatever the flavor of the month ends up being, essentially. But... Other than that, uh, it also gets you access in, potentially into my Discord server where you can just chat with me on a daily basis and all that sort of stuff and also play me for dual videos if that's what you want to do. But other than that, if you want to buy and sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then I implore you to check out Second Chance Gaming's website. A link to that is in the description down below. Uh, they have very, very good pricing and shipping from what I've experienced with. They are a direct sponsor of me and the channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business. So if you're looking to acquire any cards or whatever based off what this ban list has changed, then definitely check out their website and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. Again, let me know what your thoughts are on this ban list in the comments down below. And take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.